essential oils with you because there was a blend that April D Sunshine posted, I, and it's lavender, lemongrass, and peppermint. Now I've blended those before, not in those proportions. So I was really intrigued. It was such a cute little reel. Um, and I definitely wanted to at least smell it. Um, so we're not making any soap today, but we are going to be exploring essential oil blends and why they, how they work, how to test them, um, even without making any soap. So let me go ahead and flip you over and I'm going to walk you through how I test blends before I make soap. This is all outlined over on the blog that's popped up um, in the link description below. And I really do hope that you can all, um, gosh, you know, I mean, I'm getting mis mixed messages from Facebook saying, Sometimes it's saying I'm live and sometimes I'm not, but either way, this is recorded. So I'll get it posted up to you on YouTube and let's go ahead and, um, just dive right in. Okay. So as I was saying, all of this is explained up on the website. The link is below in the description. And I think we've even done this before, but essential oil blends can be kind of flighty and tricky. And a lot of people have questions about how to get them to stick, how to blend them, how much you can use, all sorts of that stuff. Um, there's a, a website, eocalc dot com I think it's a dot com that's linked on the article too where you can test your essential oil blend so essential oils all have some safe usage rates that information is going to be supplied to you by your supplier um, you can look them up on the IFRA um, standards you know on their website if you want to get into that um, you can also use EOCalc, which has those standards for the majority of essential oils. But when it comes to blending, you have to be careful because like, let's take the lavender, lemongrass and peppermint blend, where if I use the safe amount of lavender and the safe amount of lemongrass and the safe amount of peppermint all in that soap, you could have too much of some of the components in there. So you need to calculate the safe essential or the safe usage rate of the essential oil blend of the full blend. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about blending and kind of how it works. So first I got a little like soup visuals here because essential oils have top notes, middle notes, and base notes. And they can be kind of confusing. So as a visual guide, I have some cute little soapy bits. <laughs> so top notes. Top notes are flighty, like butterflies. They are beautiful. They have wonderful aromas to them. You smell them, but then poof, they can go away, just like a butterfly in the garden. Yes, I've been watching lots of butterflies in my garden. Also from the garden, you have like the flowers, you have the grass, the leaves, anything that's growing. And I associate those with your middle notes. They're a little bit stronger. They last longer, but they are still a little bit flighty and like the leaves of a tree. They're going to fade away with the seasons, but there are middle notes. And without the middle notes, the butterflies would never come, so your top notes. And these middle notes can kind of help these top notes stay longer, be a little more prominent, a little more dominant in the blend. And then you have your base notes. See, I think I really just wanted to play with some soap. These are elephants. They're heavy. They are deep and earthy. They're very grounding. And with all of this and you can even just imagine this being the dirt, the soil, because a lot of times they smell heady and earthy like that. So these are your base notes. Without the base notes, the top and the middle notes are going to just fade away, not last as long. So by blending top, middle, and base notes, that's how you get aromas that tend to stick. So let's put the pretty soaps away for a moment. <laughs> And let's look at um, some essential oils and whether or not they are top, middle, or base notes. 
top notes, remember these can be kind of flighty. They tend to be citrusy, minty. So I have an orange five fold here, uh, peppermint, that's a top note. Um, I actually have Japanese peppermint. There's different types of peppermint out there too. Um, bergamot, bergamot, bergamot. <laughs> Very citrusy blend. Spearmint, another mint, lemongrass. These, these are all top notes. I'm going to push them aside over here. We're going to blend some of these. And I think some of those you already know what they smell like. Um, lemongrass, even though it's a top note and we say they tend to be more flighty, lemongrass sticks really well in blends. You might even say it's almost like a top note with some base note characteristics to it. Then for middle notes, and we're going to go back to top notes in a minute. Let me explain why. Middle notes like tea tree and geranium. So as I said, these are going to be, they're not like immediately, oh my gosh, I smell it right away but they definitely help carry the top notes through. But check these out, lavender, eucalyptus, sage. These are three aromas that fall right in between the top and the middle. So they can kind of be used to start some of that anchoring the their aromas, all these, anything considered anything in the middle will last longer throughout the blend. And like a lot of times I use lavender all by itself and it just sticks and it lasts really well. You don't necessarily need a base note with it, but in a blend with lavender and a base note and some more flightier top notes, that lavender will really kind of help everything mingle together and carry through. Then your base notes, we're going to use the elephants. Here's some Lang Lang and Holwood. These are base notes, but they also tend to go a little more towards middle notes. And then some like straight up base notes use very sparingly amorous and patchouli. These are super earthy, heady, deep, dark, dark oils. Um, these are some of my favorites. A little bit of these will go a really, really long way. All of that is also outlined in the article for you. So typically when you're working up a blend, I mean, you're going to be working in parts, like one part lavender to one part um, lemongrass to one part sage would be equal amounts of each in your blend. And I kind of hesitate in going, mm -mm, it's the best way to say it, because there's no like set, dead, right or wrong rules. You, I did put in the post that you could have like your top notes, which again are the first aroma you're going to smell. That can be anywhere from like 40 to 50% of your blend. Your middle notes, maybe about 50% of your blend. Again, you know, depending on those top notes and your base notes, I mean, a small amount, like maybe 10%. You really do not need that much of your base note in there. So if you want to try all this crazy stuff out, but you don't want to make a whole heck of a lot of soap, right? Or maybe you just want to do have some soapy fun and you for some reason you can't make soap like that's the situation I'm in now. This is an awesome way to play with your soapy stuff. Okay, let me try and get this lid off. I thought I had loosened those. Okay, so aren't these jars cute? My sister found them for me. They're just these like little mini mason jars. I'm sure she got them at Michael's or something. On each one, I just put a little number and I've got my notes over here and we'll write down one, two, three, four, what we're putting in here so we can remember later. But the idea here is we're going to put parts, one part, two part, three part, four part, however much of an essential oil in here. And then we're gonna put the lids on, then we're gonna let them kind of mingle, which is important for essential oils, for those aromas to mingle together. Otherwise you're just smelling some lavender and smelling some lemongrass. And then we're going to come back and sniff them after they've had a chance to mingle. So let's 
let's go ahead and do the first one. And this is straight up April D. Sunshine's um, blend where she had six parts lavender. So our lavender is going to be our, it's a top note, but it also is a middle note. And, because it has different components in it. Remember, one essential oil can have many different components to it. I'm just going to get a little pipette and squeeze some up, just since this is such a big bottle. And her blend had six parts lavender. So these are, it's a Q-tip I cut in half. I'm going to put one drop, or you could even just dip these, just do them all the same. So there's one, we're gonna get six. There's five and there's six of lavender in there. Okay, and I'm going to use lavender, I think, in all of them. Now I'm just going to put, oh, hold on, I'm gonna put the rest of the blend in there. <laughs> okay, let's get the lemongrass. This is a smaller bottle, so I can probably just tip it up to the side. And she said, um, assuming so, there's not much left in there. Okay, so four parts. Yeah, I'm gonna get a little pipette out for this one too. And we want four parts of lemongrass. One, two, three, four. And I do wanna play with her blend a little bit. That's why we're gonna use all of these um, in there. And then she said peppermint. Now she did not specify which peppermint and there are many peppermints out there. Um, again, I'm using the Japanese peppermint that I hardly ever do just straight up peppermint soap. And I really, really, really like the way this one blends. I don't like, mm, it's kind of like, I don't want to say, I mean, it's not like candy cane peppermint smelling. I mean, kind of on the back end of it is. She had two parts of peppermint, so I'm going to put that in here. So two, two parts of peppermint in there. Um, and I don't want to say the word medicinal, but it has kind of, kind of like an antiseptic smell to it, maybe. Um, however, it blends so incredibly well with orange. And I do a blend that I really like that's um, orange and peppermint. Anyway, so we've got them in here. So this is our little jar of Q-tips. And I'm just going to let them sit here and chill out and mix together. So let's go ahead and mix up another one. And I think I'm just going to do the two blends. Now, so my concern and why this blend um, fascinated me so much is because there's no base note in this. There isn't. There's no base note in this. Um, although it does have that lavender in there, which I swear, lavender is like this top middle base note behemoth of amazingness because it really helps carry all things along. So maybe it's that lavender in there that's really making this um, kind of work its magic. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to put a base note in there and that base note I want to put in is the amorous. Now, um, April's ratio of six to four to two can also be reduced to um, three to two to one. It's also fewer Q-tips, so that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna put one part of amorous in here because I think that'll be a good blend. This still has the little silly dropper top thing on it. So see if I can get some out. I have to shake it. Okay. Here's a trick for getting that little tippy top off there. Put the, the lid. It's just, I'm just setting it on, not screwing it on, but you can kind of feel and use it as a way to grip it. And then voila, it comes off. And then you can pop that back in there if you want to. 
kind of help keep things sealed up. Okay, let's put one part of amorous in there. There we go. That's really sticky, gooey. Most base, note, base notes are going to be very um, high viscosity. Uh, let's get our lavender in here. And I'm going to put three. So I just, it's her same ratio. I'm just using fewer Q tips. One, two. I need to get more in here. Here's the two, three. So that's our lavender. And notice also I'm wearing gloves because you don't want to get um, undiluted essential oils on your skin. That is a big no-no because these suckers are potent. We also need the peppermint put in here. I'm real excited about this. I can't wait to see how this comes out. And then if I like it, um, we'll save it and make some soak out of it soon. Now, I don't know if shaking these actually does anything, but it makes me feel like it's shaking and that that's a good thing. So I'm going for it. Um, okay, let's, let's do one more. I want to do a little bit, and this I'm just going to make it up because I love um, um, lavender and sage. And I haven't quite found my perfect lavender and sage mix, and maybe I never will. So that's two parts lavender. I don't think I'm going to put the lemongrass in here. So let's just go ahead and be done with that one. And I'm just putting this away over here. Okay. Then we put the lavender in there. Let's get the sage. I did two parts lavender. This one might come out awful, might come out great. Let's put one part sage. And see, these are just like my favorite smells. Who knows if they're gonna be any good, but that's why this testing is awesome. This is my patchouli. I kind of keep a ring around it because it gets so sticky in there. It's just this little, plastic baggie that's I kind of keep in there. Okay, let's see if I can get some patchouli out. Now patchouli, this stuff is so magical. Look at that itty bitty little bit. Look how it's so dark and thick and sticky. And this one's aged too. This was gifted to me um, and it was hidden in the back. So this one, we have two parts lavender, one part sage, one part patchouli. Okay, I'm gonna let those sit for another minute. Let's put these lids on. And while they're sitting, I can also flip you back because you're just looking at kind of this boringness now. Um, let's talk a little bit about what to do once we've like found an aroma that we like, okay? So now we've, you know, set these suckers up, but we eventually want to get them in our soap. And they are sitting here just kind of chilling out, mingling. And we want them to do that for like five minutes. That's why we're still chatting. Um, we, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm multitasking here. I think I'm going to multitask this part later. Okay, so... Let's say we really, really love this weird blend, this lavender sage patchouli that I came up with, right? Let's say this comes out being the most amazing out of the jar smell and we absolutely love it and we want to convert that to soap. So I talked a little bit about the beginning of safe essential oil usage rates. We're going to have to do a little bit of looking up to see if what we came up with here is going to be safe and skin safe. Um, Again, I love eocalc.com. The simplest thing to do would be to put this blend into eocalc and figure out how much of this blend can we put in. In my um, Ultimate Natural Soap Making course, I do go through that in great detail and like how to manipulate how much of what is in there until you have safe usages on all of them. Um, 
But once we figured out how much is safe to use, then we need to see how much of it do we actually need to use, no more than the safe usage amount, in order to carry through in the soap. Um, in that blog post that I linked, I did include details on some ways that you can kind of help anchor your scent in your soap, obviously saturating them in kale and clay to kind of, it's like the clay molecules kind of hold on to the aromas, kind of lock them in so that when you wash with them, they kind of release and it just makes it stick a little longer. Um, at least it appears to also salted soaps aromas tend to stick so well if you're working with salt bars and the best part is they stick so well you can use a lot less and then of course there's my favorite hot process where you can use a fraction of the essential oils if because you're adding them after the cook after saponification has already happened so you just let the soap batter cool down a bit add your essential oils in and you can use a lot less essential oil to get a really wonderful lasting aroma in your hot process soaps um, and my other favorite trick for getting things to stick is using other components of your formulation that complement the aroma, um, like chocolate covered oranges, absolutely love it. And I know cocoa butter is crazy expensive right now, but using orange and mint, which are two super flighty essential oils with cocoa butter, I mean, there's something about it, and it's just, it's maybe it's just the cocoa butter. It just acts like such a great base note that it really locks in that orange and mint, and I swear those smell like chocolate oranges for just the longest time. Absolutely love them. Um, or with like the resin soaps. Um, that's one of the courses we're exploring on the um, Best Friends Club over at SoapyFriends.com. Um, those resin soaps have such a wonderful aroma to them that again, acts as a fantastic base note. And that's just based on your formulation. Um, so adding some essential oils to that to complement or alter, change, enhance, whatever you want to call it to create brand new aromas, way cool. All right, so I've yapped for a few minutes. Let's smell these. Okay, first we're gonna start with one, I'm going to take my gloves off because they have some essential oil drips on them and I kind of don't want to mix my nose up. Okay, so I'm not gonna take the lid off and stick my nose in there. You don't wanna do that. What you want to do is, mmm, wave it around. Well, April, this is really nice. I do really like this, this is really nice. It is, it's very, I mean, I think she called it calm your mind and that is a fabulous explanation for this. Oh my goodness, I really, really love this. It really is calming and centering. I'm smelling, you know, all of the wonderfulness of all of us. Wow, this is, yeah, everyone needs to try this one. This is great. Okay, so I'm gonna set this down for a minute. I should have brought in my coffee beans, I didn't. So kind of like uh, if you're tasting food and don't they give you like um, some like a piece of lettuce to chew on in between, you gotta kind of cleanse your palate with it. So this next one is the same blend, but I added a little bit of a base note to it um, with the amorous. So let's see what that did to it. I'm wondering if it'll make it last longer. One thing I noticed about the Clarify Your Mind blend from April is after I was done smelling it, it really didn't stick with me. Oh, that's nice. Oh, and it lingers a little longer. Mm, we're totally making some soap with this. I love this. It is, it's, it's like minty and fresh, but floral all at the same time. And I don't like, if you ask me, Amorous has like zero smell to it, but adding a drop in there so is really just gonna help kind of anchor everything down. Oh, this is lovely. Okay, 
we are saving this puppy and making some soap. We'll do some so next time we make soap, um, which hopefully will be in just a week or two, because I can push the button on a stick blender now. Um, we're definitely going to do that. Okay, so this is lavender sage, and didn't we add patchouli to it? Lang Lang's also another base note. It's one of my favorites as well. Um, okay, let's making sure I'm not smelling anything else. Really, I wish I brought my coffee beans in here. It would have allowed me to kind of smell something else, kind of clear things out a little bit, but let's give this a go anyway. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> it's, it's like just too sagey. Okay, so I mean, I like the, oh, that sage is so strong. We just put one part sage in there. You know what I want to do? Let's um, lavender it up a little bit more. So here's the lavender. I'm going to put three more parts lavender in this. So I'm just going to one, two, and three. That sage is so strong. Okay, so there's our lavender, <laughs> lavender buffer. Um, I have a, a blend that I absolutely love with some sage and some cedarwood and some lemongrass in there. Oh, I absolutely love it. And I really want to get kind of like a, a heady lavender, maybe. I don't know. I just, maybe it, I should have used cedarwood instead of the patchouli in there. Um, I swore I could have tried that at times before. Maybe it was just too much, um, too woody with the cedar wood. Anyway, let's give this one more try. Could let it, should let it mingle for a couple more minutes, but we're almost out of time here. So let's just see if that helped chill out some of that sage a little bit. Oh, it did. Mmm, that's really nice. I think. Okay, you know, I think this might be worth trying in a soap because that sage does kind of mellow itself out. Okay, so my next step with these is I'm just going to let them hang out and I'm going to come back tomorrow. Just give them a sniff, see if I still like the way they smell. Um, I'm pretty sure I will. I'm really excited about... Um, the clarify your mind with the amorous added to it. I'm really excited about that. I'm hoping that'll allow more of that mint to kind of anchor and come through in the final soaks. That really is a fabulous blend. Um, yeah, so, you know, this is a great way to kind of test your essential oils, see what does work, what doesn't work for you before you even make your soap. Um, now, don't be surprised if the aroma changes when you make the soap because some of the components of essential oils, they just don't survive saponification. But some of the little tips we talked about with some more base note anchoring from formulations or clay or salt could really help with that. Um, and there's more details on some of that stuff over on that blog post. So thanks for popping in with me for Soapy Friends Live. It was great to hang out with you. If you had comments and I didn't see them, I do apologize. I'll come back and pop through on those though. Um, but in the meantime, happy soaping. I'll see you.